This is section 2.5. We're going to talk about order of operations with integers. We talked about order of operations with whole numbers, and we have the same basic steps. So the first, the first thing we have to do, if we're simplifying an expression, is to do all the operations that are in grouping symbols. Grouping symbols are parentheses, brackets, absolute value symbols, fraction bars. Our second step is to evaluate any expressions with exponents. Third is multiply or divide in order from left to right. And the last one is add or subtract in order from left to right. So here's an example. If we want to simplify this expression, we have 4 times the quantity 5 minus 2 plus 4 squared. So if we look through and pick out the first thing in our order of operations, we have a set of parentheses, so we would work inside of those first. So our first step is to simplify inside the parentheses. So we're going from 5 minus 2 here to 3. Our next step, we have a multiplication and we also have an exponent. So our next step would be to simplify the exponential part. So we're going to write 4 squared as 16. Now we have a multiplication and an addition, so the multiplication is going to come first. We multiply 4 times 3 to get 12, and then our last step is to add the 12 and the 16 to get 28. Now a hint for working with these is that if you have exponents, the parentheses make an important difference. If we have parentheses around a negative number like this and we're squaring it, for example, that's going to give us a different answer than if we don't have parentheses. So these two expressions don't mean the same thing. If we take negative 5 and square it, that means we're multiplying negative 5 times negative 5 and we end up with a positive 25. But this expression means it's the opposite of 5 squared. So it's the opposite of 5 times 5, and that gives us a negative 25. So if we have the parentheses, then we're squaring the negative 5. If we don't have the parentheses there, then we're squaring the 5, and then we're taking the opposite of our result. Here's some examples. So if we look through this we can see that we have an addition and a multiplication. The multiplication comes first. So our first step here is to multiply. So we have negative 2 plus 30. Then we're going to add. If we add negative 2 and 30, we're going to get 28. So our final answer is 28. Okay, let's look at this one. We have a subtraction, we have a multiplication, and we have a set of parentheses with a subtraction. So our first step here is to simplify inside the parentheses. So if we take 5 minus 8, we're going to end up there with a negative 3. Now we have a subtraction and a multiplication, so our next step is going to be to multiply. If we have 5 here times a negative 3, 5 times negative 3 is going to give us a negative 15. Okay, finally we can do the subtraction, and again we're going to rewrite that as an addition. So we have our negative 2 plus, so we're adding the opposite of negative 15, which is 15. 
and that's going to give us a final answer of positive 13. Okay, on to the next problem. In this one we have a subtraction and a multiplication. So our first step is going to be to multiply. So we have our 33 minus and then 8 times 2 is 16. And then we're going to subtract and we can just subtract these two directly and we get 17. In this one we have a division and a subtraction. So again, multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction. So our first step is to do our division. Notice with this one we have two numbers with different signs, so we know our result is going to be negative, and then 80 divided by 8 is 10. So that's going to give us negative 10 minus 15. So now we just have a subtraction. So again, we can rewrite this as an addition, so we have plus the opposite of 15. Since these two values have the same sign, that means we're adding the absolute values together. So 10 plus 15 gives us 25, and then we're taking the sign that went with both of these, which was negative. So our answer for this one is negative 25. Okay, this one's a little bit longer. So again, if we look all the way through here, we have a subtraction, we have a multiplication, we have a set of parentheses, and we have a subtraction in there and an exponent, and then we have an addition. So our first step is to work inside the parentheses. I'm going to write this over here just to give myself a little bit more room. So if we look at our parentheses, we even have to make a choice inside the parentheses of what to do first, because we have a subtraction and we have an exponent. The first one that we have to do is the exponent, so 2 squared is 4. In this one we're working with our exponent first. And then still inside the parentheses, we need to subtract. So if we take 7 minus 4, that gives us 3. Okay, now we have a subtraction and a multiplication and an addition, so we're going to do the multiplication. So we have 2 times 3 is 6. So now we have 8 minus 6 plus 3. So now we just have a subtraction and an addition, and we do these in order from left to right. So we would start with the subtraction. So 8 minus 6 gives us 2. And then finally we add. Okay, here are a couple more examples. So for this one, we have a multiplication, an addition, a subtraction inside the parentheses, and then an exponent. So even though we have an exponent here, we have to simplify inside the parentheses first. So our first step here is to work inside our parentheses. Now this is going to take a little bit of work because this isn't as simple as subtraction. So we can rewrite this as an addition. And then if we add those two, we're going to end up with an answer of negative 2. Okay, so now we have our exponent. So 
So, and in this case, notice that our negative 2 is inside the parentheses. So that means, actually, we can rewrite this as negative 2 times negative 2. Since negative 2 squares, negative 2 squared just means you're multiplying negative 2 times itself. So that gives us, now since these are the same sign, that's going to come out positive. So we end up with a positive 4. Okay, now we have a multiplication and an addition, so we're going to do the multiplication. These two numbers have different signs, so we end up with a negative 6. And finally we're going to add, and negative 6 plus 4 is going to give us a negative 2. Okay, now we have one with a fraction bar. So remember we think of the fraction bar as a grouping symbol which means we have to work on the top of the fraction bar and simplify there and we have to work on the bottom of the fraction bar and simplify there before we can do anything else. So let's start with working on the top of the fraction bar. So we'll just leave the bottom part alone for right now. Now if we look at what's on top of the fraction bar, we have a multiplication, a subtraction, and an addition. So the first thing to do would be the multiplication. So we have 8 times negative 2. That would give us negative 16. So we have negative 16 minus 4 plus 3. Let's just keep simplifying here. Now we have a subtraction and an addition, so we work in order from left to right. So we have negative 16. Let's rewrite this as an addition. So now we have negative 16 plus a negative 4. That's going to give us a negative 20. And finally, if we add the negative 20 and the 3, we end up with a negative 17. Okay, now we got everything simplified on the top of the fraction bar. Now let's work on the bottom of the fraction bar. Okay, so we're doing negative 85 divided by 5. Since we're dividing and we have a negative number and a positive number, that means we're going to end up with a negative answer. And negative or 85 divided by 5 is going to give us 17. So on the bottom of our fraction bar, we end up with a negative 17. Now that we've simplified in both places, the only other operation we have left to do is division. So we're dividing two numbers with the same sign, since they're both negative. So we know our answer is going to be positive, and then 17 divided by 17 gives us 1. So our final answer for this is 1. Okay, if we evaluate algebraic expressions, that means we're just going to replace our variables with the values that we have. So we're going to use the same values for the variables in each of these four problems. So let's write these out with our parentheses. So for the x, we're going to replace that with a negative 3. The y we're replacing with 6. And the z we're replacing with negative 1. Now we just have two additions. We can do this addition first. We're adding a negative number and a positive number. So that would give us a value of 3. Now we have our last addition to do. 
So if we add these two, we end up with two. So our answer for this one ends up being two. Okay, in this one we have two times y minus three times z plus, oops, plus x. I wasn't supposed to write the z in there. So we're going to replace the y with six. We're going to replace the z with a negative one. And we're going to replace the x with a negative three. So there's what we have. And by our order of operations, since we have multiplications in here, start out by doing our multiplications. We're working from left to right, so first we do 2 times 6. Now we're going to do our other multiplication. So 3 times negative 1 is going to be negative 3. And now all we have left is a subtraction and an addition. So we do those also from left to right. So our next step is to subtract. And in order to do that here, we're going to rewrite this as an addition. Oops, I forgot my equal signs. So we have 12 plus the opposite of negative 3, which is just positive 3. Adding these two together, we get 15. And then our last step is the addition. So if we add 15 and negative 3, we end up with 12. So here's our final answer is 12. Okay, now if we have 8x divided by 2y, we're replacing the x with a negative 3 and replacing the y with a 6. So now if we think about our order of operations, since we have the fraction bar, that counts as a grouping symbol. So we have just to simplify on the top of the fraction bar and then simplify on the bo bottom of the fraction bar before we can do anything else. If we work on the top of the fraction bar, we have 8 times negative 3, which is going to give us negative 24. And then if we work on the bottom of the fraction bar, 2 times 6 is 12. Now since we've simplified both places, we can do the division. Notice we have a negative number on the top and a positive number on the bottom. Different signs, so we know our answer will be negative. And then 24 divided by 12 is going to give us 2. So our final answer is going to be negative 2. And finally, we have 5y minus x squared. So if we replace the y with a 6 and the x with a negative 3, this is one reason that I really like to do this, these evaluation problems using the parentheses, because we didn't even have to think about whether this negative 3 went in or inside or outside of the parentheses. We already had the parentheses there and we're just replacing the x with a negative 3. So our first step in our order of operations is to do the exponent. So again, if we think about negative 3 squared, that's the same as negative 3 times negative 3. Two numbers with 
the same sign, so that gives us a positive answer, and then 3 times 3 is 9. So that means we have 5 times 6 minus 9. Now our next step in our order of operations is our multiplication. So we do 5 times 6 is 30. And then our very last one would be the subtraction. So we take 30 minus 9, which gives us 21. Now last of all, we talked in the module about whole numbers, we talked about finding the average for a list of numbers. But now that we know how to deal with integers, both positive and negative, we can find the average of a list of numbers even if some of them are negative or zero or positive. Now if you remember, to find the average, we add all of the values we're going to take negative 20 plus negative 9 plus negative 1 plus 0 plus 4 plus 6 plus 6. That's on the top. And then we divide by how many numbers there are in the list. So we have 7 numbers in the list. That means we're dividing by 7. So now, again, we have a fraction bar that counts as a grouping symbol. So we have to do all these additions on the top as our first step. So the first one would be the negative 20 plus the negative 9. That's going to give us negative 29. And notice as we do each step here, we still have to remember to write the fraction bar and put the 7 underneath it so that we don't forget to do that in the end. Now our next two numbers to add are negative 29 and negative 1. So that's going to give us negative 30. So we have that divided by 7. Then if we take negative 30 plus 0, remember that property of 0, if you add it to anything you get the number back. That's just going to be negative 30 okay now the negative 30 plus the 4 is going to give us negative 26 and then negative 26 plus 6 gives us negative 20 and finally negative 20 plus 6 gives us negative 14 so finally we're done with simplifying on top of the fraction bar and now we just have a division to do since we have one negative and one positive number that means our answer will be negative and 14 divided by 7 is 2 so our average is negative 2 Okay, this next one, the list is a little bit shorter, but again, we're just taking this whole list and adding all the numbers on the top of our fraction bar, and then on the bottom, we have how many numbers were in the list, which was four. So we're going to do all of these additions and then our last step will be to divide by 4. So if we add all of these values up, first of all the negative 50 plus the negative 30 is going to give us negative 80. Then the negative 80 plus the negative 15 gives us negative 95. Finally, negative 95 plus a negative 5 gives us negative 100. Now we've got everything simplified on the top, so now we can do our division. Since we have a negative divided by a positive, we know our answer will be negative. 
and then 100 divided by 4 is 25. So our final answer is negative 25.